As South Sudan's big day draws near, we're joined again by the host of Voice of America's Sudan in Focus radio program, John Tanza. John, it's good to have you again, and I know you must be just, uh, I guess, channeling what is going on there in South Sudan. Thank you, from here in Washington. It's always good to be here. Now, unfortunately, there's a cloud over this pending independence celebration on Saturday, just new developments of uh, what happened with the talks in Ethiopia over southern Kordofan. Tell us about those developments. President Bashir today made a statement at the White Nile State saying that he will not recognize any agreement that is signed outside Sudan. And uh, he is sort of saying he, everything is going to be thrown to the trash can. And to me, that's not a good sign because the Addis Ababa framework agreement signed between the National Congress Party and the SPLM Northern Sector is basis for resolving what is happening in southern Kordofan. There's been a lot of killings. Their civilians are being targeted and mm -hmm. a lot of displacements. If that situation is not resolved, Sudan could easily slide back into a full-scale war. I think the recent numbers I heard were about 73,000 people were fleeing and there's a lot of displacement. Of course, maybe even more than that number. That's an estimate. You, you, you don't know exactly how many people are displaced because the the, 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 the landscape of that area is mountainous and sometimes it's very difficult to reach people who are in caves. What is the significance of that kind of um, message coming from President Bashir so close to Sudan's, South Sudan's independence? Does it threaten the day's activities at all? It does. I'm not saying it will uh, stop the 9th of July happening, but what is happening is that it's going to be a sticking issue after the 9th of July. The people of uh, Nugo Mountains who are in the southern Kordofan have been fighting alongside with southerners mm -hmm. for the same cause, for recognition, for power sharing, for wealth sharing. So if South, southern Kordofan is bleeding, then there's going to be no peace in Sudan. The people of South Sudan will be forced to join hands with the people of southern Blue Nile to make sure that uh, there is some sort of peace in that area. And uh, something else which uh, I'm sure is a matter of concern right now for a lot of Southern Sudanese. Yesterday, Northern Sudan released its new map after the split, and in it is included Abye, the, the, uh, the disputed Abye region. Right. What has been the reaction to that? Well, the reaction is not good because uh, Abye is a disputed area. You cannot include it in a map when you have not resolved its status. And there's a lot of anger. You remember when the, the government of South Sudan came up with a draft interim constitution, they had mentioned that ABA is going to be part of South Sudan. And so the National Congress Party made noise, and the government of South Sudan respected that. They say you cannot include ABA because the status is not yet resolved. They respected that. Removed ABA from the interim constitution. Now, the National Congress Party is including ABA in the new map of Sudan. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what is going to be the Republic of Sudan. So that is uh, a new beginning of another conflict because okay. the people of uh, South Sudan are going to fight hard to make sure that Abia is not part of the North. Well, um, I guess hopefully we're all watching very intensely, waiting to see how these unfold before, right. the, uh, before Saturday's big day. Thank you, John Tanza. You'll be joining us again tomorrow, so we look forward to more information about what's going Thank on. Thank you, Demi. Okay. That's John Tanza. He's a host of VOA's In Focus program broadcasting to South Sudan.